All right, I'm super excited today to be doing a little bit of flower pressing, plant pressing, combined into my nature journal with you today. A little bit of art journaling techniques. I'm gonna switch right over to my document camera and show you some of what I ha have set up here. Hopefully everyone's doing well and has their chocolate supply ready to go. And I will be talking about materials because um, some of you may not have very many flowers in your area right now or you may be wondering how am i supposed to do this if it's still snowing outside where i live so i'm going to talk about some alternatives and some house plants um, that you can use and things like that um, and we will get into that and first though i'm going to talk a little bit about why i think um, pressing flowers and art journaling techniques are so cool to combine with your nature journaling and why i think it's something that you should try um, and I'm going to do that partly by showing you some examples and um, hopefully some of this stuff will be applicable no matter where you live in the world. Um, so I think that one of the reasons why this makes so much sense, and I talked about this in the show on Wednesday, is it's really easy to add visual elements into your nature journal, even if it's on that last page of your journal that you normally don't use. So that is one advantage. And I think it's also really good if you're a little bit more intimidated by drawing. There's a lot of creative things you can do, however, and be working that muscle and just getting in that fun, artsy practice without having to worry about how do I perfectly draw this plant from nature. So those are some of the advantages. It also is a way to bring some smells into your nature journal. And one of the things I'm gonna be experimenting with a little bit today is using aromatic leaves in my nature journal and pressing those and attaching those into my journal in different ways. And I think that's something for those of you who are in places where it is still really cold, these leaves can be an option for you um, in many cases. And I'm gonna show some quick techniques where you don't even need a flower press to get some of this material into your nature journal. Um, oh, really awesome, Angie's tuning in um, today. So um, hi, Angie. And uh, some of the materials that I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using Mod Podge. I did just buy a new thing of this, so I have to use it. I have some really cheap, cheap um, brushes um, for painting Mod Podge on. Now I have tweezers that I, scavenge from a first aid kit so that I can more easily pick up flowers and stuff out of my press. Um, I have some regular scotch tape here and then I also have clear packing tape. I have another type of glue that I'm experimenting with which is by the Tombow company that does those pins and this one has um, two different sides to it, um, a, a broad side and a pointy side. Um, I'm probably not going to be using this brush unless I do some bigger watercolor washes. It is possible to rinse out Mod Podge from brushes, but so far I've, um, I haven't I have been getting them perfectly clean, so I don't want to use that great of a brush. I don't recommend using super glue. I have experimented with carrying this since they come in these small, convenient packages. Um, it discolors paper, and it's non-archival, so it can create like weird color um, changes on on paper. Um, it's also really messy and you can get your finger completely stuck to your journal and never be able to pick it up again. Oh cool, um, Cindy and Valerie are here. Welcome to the show and someone who's excited about um, packing tape on Facebook is here. Um, can't always read the names on Facebook um, so just guessing who that is. Uh, I also have some ferns here, some of these eucalyptus leaves that have been chewed on, which I think have a really cool pattern. Um, I think this would be a great element to incorporate into art journaling or junk journaling because it already looks like someone tore the edge of it and it has such a great look even though um, it was made by an animal. Um, and then these are some of my, um, ooh, this actually could be sudden oak death on that tip there. Um, this is from a Bay, California Bay tree, which has a, an aromatic scent. Um, I also have some house plants. So if you don't have um, flowering plants outside yet, this is a Phalaenopsis orchid. These are like one of the easiest things to grow once you learn not to overwater them. And while the flowers are very three-dimensional, 
Um, I will try, I will probably try pressing one of those today. And this is something that even if you lived in a cold climate um, or don't have easy access to flowers outside, you could grow these um, at home. Another one I really like and I think will be good for pressing um, and is easy to grow at home and super fun and cute are these pinguiculas. This is actually a, a type of carnivorous plant. Um, you can see all the bugs stuck on its leaves down here. And these are beautiful. Um, in nature, they're pollinated by hummingbirds. Camera's not focusing on it very well, but they have these really cute flowers on them. Um, I'll have to get it in focus a little bit more later, but a really cool plant, easy to grow. There's two species in this, this pot right here. And I just have this on top of my refrigerator. It does great. Really fun to sketch a nature journal. I'm gonna try pressing some of the flowers on here. So those are some options if you um, don't have access to flowers outside right now. Another thing is um, garden catalogs. Whether you're into gardening or not, a garden catalog can be a good source of images. In this case, they're drawings usually um, that you can cut out and glue those in using a lot of the same techniques today. There's also glossy um, nature magazines and um, plant catalogs, seed catalogs that have lots of images of flowers. So that is also an option if you don't have um, access to flowers outside right now. I'm gonna show you one more example um, from this book and then dive right into it. These borage flowers are really, really cool too. Um, really easy in my neck of the woods to grow. They're also edible, but they press really well. Let me get this chocolate out of here and show you an example from, this is turning into my art journal right here. It's a really fat, I, it was sort of like a gimmick journal, um, really, really fat. I can't remember, I think it's like a thousand pages or something like that. And I don't know if you can tell, but the, um, the dimensions on this are really ridiculous. And it is, 13 inches by 11 inches. It's an 11 by 13 journal and it's, let's see how thick it is. It's over two inches, over two inches thick. So it's quite a big journal. I'm going through and doing some different um, art journaling type techniques and experimenting with that, which is, is new to me and pressing some flowers in here. Let me see where my pressed flower. Uh, here's one that I've been showing a lot because I really like how it came out and um, I'm going to do an example of this today where I cut out um, a flower that has already been pressed and glued onto a page and it creates this cool outline. I talked about this in the show on Wednesday um, that I stole this idea from a kid who did who cut theirs out like that. So. Uh, I love that idea and I've been doing a bunch in that style. Um, let me show you a couple other examples. I already explained why I think pressing flowers and art journaling and nature journaling techniques are, are a good combination, uh, but now I'm showing you some of them. These here are examples of ones that are just weeds. Um, and uh, so like you don't need like fancy plants. And look, this is mistletoe. So people in cold places probably even have access to mistletoe. Um, when there's snow out, I'm guessing. Um, but this is is looks really cool. And the kid uh, did a cutout version of mistletoe um, with that cutout style, and it looked really good. So I, I think even if there aren't any things blooming in your area, there probably are some examples of things that you can press. Um, sometimes you can even buy like already pressed flowers. Um, these ones are actually borage flowers that I did, but I made a little cut out in my nature journal um, so that there would be this sort of cool transition. Um, I'm also experimenting with um, putting maps into my journal and giving them sort of a pirate look. So this one, I lit it on fire and the fire got a little bit out of control and it burnt up um, some of the important islands in the Galapagos got completely burnt up when I was trying to add a little bit of character to that um, page. Um, here is the technique where you just use packing tape, okay? So this was on uh, Thursday, I guess. A few days ago, I took this entire plant, and don't worry, this is just a weed. It's an, in, it's an invasive species where I live, so um, it's not like pulling it up was not going to, you know, totally throw the entire ecosystem out of balance or anything like that. 
and I took it and all I did was lay it flat. It didn't get pressed first or anything. I just laid it flat in my nature journal and taped it down with this packing tape right here. Um, and I did the same for this oak leaf, which is really cool, but I had the idea to um, turn this into like a flipping thing. And I think this is one of the things that Sue had some cool examples of this um, when I interviewed her. So I didn't come up with this idea, but being able to use the, the packing tape, this is something you couldn't do with the Mod Podge, is use it as a way to be able to see both sides of that item. So this leaf also didn't get pressed or any special treatment. It just got stuck in some masking tape and put down on paper. I definitely recommend that if you're going to use this masking tape technique, you, you, you practice with it a lot because there's going to be aspects of it that maybe you don't like the aesthetic of. You might need more of a bowl technique because, for example, you can see there is um, like these edges and stuff and it's it's some stuff that you won't, it doesn't look like as elegant of a solution perhaps as the Mod Podge um, or a pressed plant just um, glued onto your page. It doesn't, it might not look as elegant as that. So you might need to be ready to experiment with other ways of incorporating that aesthetic into your page. So like here, for example, this looks really clean. You don't see any um, edges of tape. You don't see any reflection. Whereas this, you get some of those. So you might notice yourself at first when you try this technique um, being a little bit thrown off by that, but I recommend you keep playing with it and just think about how maybe making your style more bold, maybe even using like a Sharpie or some kind of broader lines um, will compensate for your lack of control in the aesthetic around um, what the masking tape looks like. Or just get a little more bold with trying different techniques such as this folding technique and see another strategy could be do this in a separate journal like if you're really precious about your journal and you have really delicate watercolors you might not want to just start taping in a bunch of masking taped plants and that could freak your aesthetics out so um, if so do it on a separate piece of paper and experiment with it there first or if you want to um, be like me and just try it then go ahead one other thing that came up when we talked about um, this in a previous show was um, how does that affect the other side of your paper? Um, yeah, so uh, this is probably Sue, I'm guessing, on Facebook. So the idea of using the ink to outline these edges and work it into your aesthetic, or maybe doing a wash around the edges, or using some type of like acrylic paints or something very bold like that is a perfect idea for how to sort of camouflage this edge or work the edge into your composition. Um, so going back to the thing about the three-dimensionality of it or how it's going to affect the paper, someone did ask about that before, like what's going to happen? Oh, you'll stick this thing in and then it's going to mess up all your pages from there on because there's going to be like a bump in it. Well, I found it's not that big of a deal. I can definitely feel a bump here. And if I didn't have a fault tolerant nature journaling style and I was trying to do like a really delicate um, pencil drawing here, maybe I would have an issue with that bump on this page. But as you can see, I've been progressing despite that bump and have been making plenty of art even here with some ink on top of that, right on top of that bump. And I'm only like two pages past it. And I only have 150 GSM paper. So your paper might be even heavier. And I don't think that the concern about the bump should stop you from trying some of these techniques, especially this can unlock your, um, your sort of pent up creativity because it's a very fast way to get something on the page and I think some people who've been doing this for a really long time I think Angie has some pages using mass uh, packing tape from a really long time ago so if you have any questions about how archival or what will this look like in the future you can ask some of those people in our community who've been using packing tape for a really long time so I'm gonna get a new page ready and I'm gonna start um, going ahead and um, doing some stuff so where I think I'm going to start is with some of these things I just picked because I want to use them before they, um, some of them might wilt a little bit. Um, one thing I wanted to show you, which is really cool, is this fern right here um, has, I think there's some, some type of spore spores on the bottom that you can actually use as a stamp, which is really cool. I usually do it with kids, but I'll show you right now and maybe I can incorporate it into my journal. All right, so I've got this blank 
bit of black paper here. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut that tip off. So when you start doing these pressings and stuff, you start seeing three-dimensional things differently. So for example, this stem, I definitely want to remove that. It will help me get a flat shape with this, but let's see here. Oh, that one didn't have very many spores on the back. Oh, there we go. See, you can kind of see the pattern of the, it works best on like a darker background. It came onto the page a little bit. Now I'm gonna try just putting some tape over that and then I'll just tape this whole one down over there. Masking tape or packing tape could be good for people who have a perfectionist tin oh this is gonna sound terrible on on the microphone when I pull this out. Oh gosh. So one thing I'm learning about is how to manage these um, sort of lines that show up. Fingerprints also show up really bad in the the tape, so you have to kind of practice a little bit. <laughs> There's probably you know special ways people do that. Alright, I'm gonna try to tape down the impression first. It's barely visible, but now I'll know. And I'm just going to use scissors instead of the, oh gosh, there we go. A little bit messy, but now let's see if I can get the leaf. I think this kind of technique is good for me because I tend to get sort of precious about my page and um, perfectionist about like the way things look. Sorry about that sound. And this technique is a good way to um, relinquish some of that control and go with more of like this, what I call a courageous or bold style, sort of like Amaya Shreve, I interviewed her a while back. She's a teenager and she just um, she just nature journals like crazy and puts in Polaroids and uses tape and she's like not she she looks she she nature journals in a very courageous, bold sort of way and um, fills lots of pages. So I think that is the the sort of approach that I want to take because I think you can learn way more that way. So you can see I, that was super easy. Um, oh yeah, that's a cool idea. It could lift the spores off with the um, packing tape. Um, one thing that I haven't delved into, but I think could be interesting at some point too, and maybe for some more sciencey people. But the interesting thing about pressing flowers and plant material into your nature journal is there's also um, your. It's a physical sample, so um, it could potentially be you know like you could potentially do DNA tests on the material or other types of tests on that material, or someone else could do that in the future. So it's like you're incorporating into your nature journal more than just visual elements that have been interpreted through your brain. You're incorporating elements that are um, physical samples of real living organisms from your environment, which could have all of these like implications that we probably haven't even thought of yet. So now I'm actually gonna cut this out and then mod podge it or something into my journal. These are the scissors I like to use for um, cutting, harvesting material. I think I had them originally for my terrarium, um, trimming plants in my terrarium, but they're good for harvesting material outside and they're also good for doing intricate cutouts like this. They're not good for cutting long, straight lines of paper, obviously. Um, so I got my spore print, and I'm going to just attach this in here somehow, and I'm going to write what's going on here and where I harvested it. Oh, I could do a joint comparison because I have another type of um, fern. But look at how this one has the leaves really rolled up. Um, and on the rolled up version, it's it's going to be harder to do it with the tape without it folding over in weird ways. This might be a good candidate for um, pressing, but either either way, it's gonna some of these leaves aren't going to end up the way that you want them necessarily.
Um, Sue has a great idea here. I like that. Good idea. I put this in because I have this idea of nature journaling at fish markets that I want to do. Okay, I think it's tea break or chocolate break. I'm actually going to start with have some of this yummy tea here that I'm going to drink. Oh, learning a new term. I like it. So is that when you're doing like really precise cutting around the edges of things? Maybe I should have done that here, but I already had this cool silver thing left over from something else that I used. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make this so it actually folds out. Which way do I want it to fold? I think I want this to fold out like this. So I'm just gonna use, um, there's probably several ways that I could do this. Like I could make it fold on the paper and glue the paper or I could just tape it. I think I'm just gonna continue with the tape and make some hinges here. So it's really easy to make hinges with tape and it's a cool way to add more interactive stuff. And this is something that Sue did a lot in hers. If you saw, hopefully you saw that episode um, last Sunday. Um, and having that is like, a, having little doors that you can open is really, really cool. And I'm gonna put them on the back too because sometimes scotch tape will peel in one direction. So I'm gonna double up the tape on both sides. And if you remember from that interview, I asked Sue if there was one technique from junk journaling and art journaling type techniques that people could use in their nature journal. If they could only use one technique, which would it be? And she said folding paper. Um, a lot of people were surprised by that answer, and I think um, the full, oops, I spilled some tea on my journal there. Um, I think the folding paper allows for you to incorporate three-dimensionality into your um, journal. Um, so that is a really cool option. Oh, Leslie's here. Hi, Leslie. Oh, my gosh. Angie's got more. Oh, my gosh. Everybody, I love how everybody has all of these things that I don't know. Um, I've never heard of roll laminate before, um, and I've never heard of a tippin before. And I wish I had an iron, but I don't. But good, good strategies here. So that is for, um, oh, that's what an eco print is. Um, for flattening out the plant, um, to use an iron on a light setting and it could probably use like a, um, I was actually thinking of steaming it or something and then trying. Um, anyways, lots of good thing, lots of good information in the chat. If you haven't looked in the chat, definitely look at the live chat. There's a lot of really knowledgeable people there. And if you're watching this as a recording, you can still see the live chat and get it timed to um, the video and, and, and watch the live chat as you watch the video because there's a lot of great um, information that's coming out there. Um, okay, so I think what I'm going to do now is um, try not to get distracted by all the possibilities. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually glue the tape this one down on another piece of black paper because it's a different species than that one. I think that'll just be cool. And it's a it's a it's a tried and true nature journaling technique called joint comparison when you compare two similar things. Um, I think I'll put it on the side that has the opposite from all that writing. The writing's not really related to the fern, but it's more of like an artistic looking thing. If you just have lots of scrap pages of different types of paper with like different types of marks on them, then you always have sources for um, your um, scrapbooking or junk journaling type um, strategies. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly tape this down. Oh gosh, that was the perfectionist in me is weeping right now. <laughs> it was really fun doing this with the kids that I teach nature journaling to on Thursday and hearing their reactions about the aesthetics of because we've been doing Mod Podge to put in um, plants and, and pressed flowers and they've been 
getting really into like making it very precise and spending forever painting the Mod Podge on really delicately. So when we did this, um, when we did this tape technique, it was interesting to hear their um, their opinions about it. Oops, that picked up some paper from my other thing. The cool thing about this is my fingerprints will be everywhere <laughs> inside of my nature journal if anyone wants to look them up sometime. Um, just kidding. All right, so if you're planning on committing crimes in the future, don't um, get your fingerprints all over the tape that you use for taping down plants because there's gonna be, your fingerprints are gonna be easy to find um, all over. So I think I'm just gonna put this so that this one opens up on uh, the opposite side here. And I think this is called, Andrew said this is called a tip in or something. Or maybe it's a tip out now because it's gonna be going out of the, oh no, that covers up, the, that looks kind of bad on the black. Okay, so putting the hinge in here. I wish it was this easy to fix the hinge on my door of my house. I'm gonna get to these leaves, these cool leaves next, I think. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't even drink my tea. Too busy talking. Next Wednesday, I'm going to be interviewing Kim LaPere from Australia. She has a YouTube channel and Nature Journal is in, I think she's in Western Australia. So it'll be really cool to talk to her and learn about the nature journaling options there are down there. Um, especially Western Australia is quite quite a far ways away from the other the other nature journaling clubs that are in Australia. I kind of want to do more silver paint around the edges of this. Um, that would just be ornamental, not really um, nature journaling. Um, but I'm going to what I'll do is I'm going to write my names of my plants here. But I think what I'm going to do is just outline it so I don't do all that writing while you're watching the show. I can't talk while I'm writing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch in where all of that goes. So this is a good strategy in the field, nature journaling in the field. Um, you might not have time to write everything out. So you can block things in. So for example, I'll try to look up the species name maybe for this plant. And I'll just make, you can use Tombow pins for this also. Um, I will Hopefully the species name will fit in there. I'm, that's going to be italics right there. That's why I'm making it at an angle. Oops, I don't want it to come out the side though. Um, so I'll put that there and then I'll put a, maybe I'll put a little bit of a description here. And I want like a parallel thing going on up here. Sometimes when I'm in the field, I will know what the words are exactly that I'm going to put in here. Um, and then I can space out the letters like F, E, R, N, and make sure that I'm going to have enough space for that lettering. That is an, a useful strategy. Um, and then I'll put a box of, I can put some text down here. All right, cool. So that's how to use a little bit of um, tape techniques and to make sort of, um, you know, little doors easily and use some art journaling techniques in your nature journal. Now I'm going to go on to the next step here and get some of this. Um, the cool thing about this too is there's nothing wet on here. So it's really easy to turn the page and do some something else. If you're using Mod Podge, especially if you're painting over things, um, it's going to slow down how fast you can turn the page. Like last night I was doing a bunch of stuff. And I had to basically have like five different workstations where I was working on things while the other things were drying. Okay, so um, I have to think about what I want to do there. I haven't figured that part out yet. But what I'm going to start with next is um, some of my leaves um, or other pressed flowers. Maybe I'll just put these here. These are my bay leaves. See, can you see that? There we go. All 
I have some questions about these, so I think I'm going to actually put them over here so I have more space. And I'm just going to use tape with those too because I think it'll be fastest. Oh, I'll put this one the other way so you can see the underside. There we go. These ones are also really good examples of bugs eating them. So I could do like an I notice, I wonder it reminds me of. Oh, a sketch of the whole plant is a great idea. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah, so what I'll do is I will just um, right here, I will, I don't even know what the overall shape of this plant is going to look like, but I'll just make a shape like that and I'll later sketch in an overall shape, maybe from a photo of this plant and the same with this one. And then I'll put arrows. I can do the arrows now with like, um, how about I use a gel pen? No, I'll use this. It's fun for arrows or a Tombow pen would be good. Does that look like an arrow? Yeah, that looks like an arrow. And this one's gonna go this way. That kind of has a nice composition element to it. It's sort of like bringing your eyes towards the middle and then you can open these and get more information. And then these will be, um, thanks to Sue's idea, these can be little sketches of the whole plant. Um, great idea. And so I taped that one in. Uh, I could do a whole, I noticed, I wonder, maybe I will do one on here to show you how to combine in the nature journaling part. Sorry about that noise. And then I'll get to those flowers underneath because there's some beautiful flowers down there. Ooh, these are a really good option. They they look really good when you press down the um, tape really nice. You can see the a lot of texture um, and different stuff going on, a lot of detail there. Oh my gosh, I almost knocked over my mug of tea. This is getting a little dangerous on my desk right now. Too many things. Okay, so I'm going to do, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. And you have to, if you can remember only one nature journaling thing, this is the one to remember. And you can abbreviate it. I think I'll fit it. In uh, where mo? There's supposed to be an O. Oh, that's not going to work on that tape. In a where mo? I note. I notice. I wonder. It reminds me of. I guess you should put another I in there if you want to. Um, so I notice similar. Parts missing. And I'm going to draw that shape because I notice it's um, sort of like a croissant type shape. So I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of can be done with images also. This shape. Okay, and I'll just go, I could notice a bunch more things. Oh, I'll notice this part here. I notice a gray-brown tip on one leaf. Okay, I'm going to go straight into I wonder. I wonder if that is um, sudden oak death. So this species of, this California bay tree can be a host for um, a disease that has been killing the oaks all across California. And it's a, a species of Phytophthora, I think. Uh, but I did an illustration of it. I did an illustration recently that had, uh, where I used a photo 
that was saying that this was set in oak death. So I'm not really totally sure, but that's one of the great things about the I wonder part of I notice I wonder I, it reminds me of is instead of being confident, you can be curious because our culture and even in our nature education culture has a um, tendency for people to be very confident and just go around saying this is that that is that and then all of their students just write down and try to memorize that information but i notice i wonder it reminds me of forces you to to just notice things like saying i notice sudden oak death on there is not an observation that's an interpretation so by doing it this way is um, much better so then now um, the the know-it-all teacher or know-it-all person in the group or whatever for the last one for it reminds me of is I'll say it reminds me of sudden oak death SOD um, in a photo I saw so this is important from a epistemological standpoint it's how how you know what you know so a lot of people confuse um, knowing things with observing things and believing things. So um, I, I can't be sure about that, but uh, I could just repeat it as information as if I was sure about it, but instead I can use, I notice, I wonder, it reminds me of. So the cool thing about this too, even if you can't read English, is that this is, um, this is creating a visual element and text is a visual element as well. Even if you can't read it, blocks of text have a nice um, visual thing to them. So like, for example, over here next to these, um, what what's going to be these drawings of the whole plant, I think it would actually look really nice if there was some text there. So I'm going to use a Tombow pin to sort of show that. I really like these pale color, any of the pale colored Tombow pins. Um, I really like because you can use them to sort of show how an element of text will look on the page. So like if, for example, I put a block of text here, even if it's nonsense text, it could create a nice visual element there. And then I'll mirror that um, on the bottom. And then you can use the Tombow pin to sort of outline it and you can write the text into that area later. Um, I really like the Tombow pin for that. It's water uh, soluble as well. So if you're doing watercolor later on, it sort of lightens up. But this pale value, it's not going to distract from the drawing, especially if I do an ink drawing there later on. Okay, so those are the um, those are those leaves. Now I'm just going to get some of these. Um, I want to maybe do a separate page with the eucalyptus leaves or something special. Um, these are really cool looking. I definitely want to try mod podging some of them but i don't know if these are going to be the ones um that looks kind of cool right there i think i might spill some of my tea on it um see what happens there should i do that before i put the um tape on probably but okay now everyone's like, Marley's getting really crazy with all of this art journaling stuff he's been reading about. Let's see what happens if I suck some of it up with this paper towel. Will it still stain? Jeez, I should have used stronger tea. I think it's going to be really faint. Okay, while that is sort of absorbing into the paper, I'm actually going to work on the mo mod podging some of these flowers that I pressed earlier. So this is why it's good to have, if you're doing this kind of work, to have multiple workstations in places where things can dry. Because once you start getting into the Mod Podge especially, you're going to need dry time, even if you have a blow dryer. So these are flowers I pressed the other day, and I think all of them have had one layer of Mod Podge. Um, let's see. This definitely has one layer of Mod Podge. I think this is the paper it was originally pressed onto. Um, this one also was in that video. This time the Mod Podge accidentally had some paint in it, so it colored it a little bit. I don't know, this one I could make into a cutout or I could leave it like that. And I think this is the one that hasn't gotten any Mod Podge yet. So I'm gonna start with this one. 
This is salvia purpurea. I think I harvested this in the video that came out on um, Wednesday. Oops. So you need something to mix your Mod Podge in. This is probably way bigger than what I need. The other thing I want is, I guess I have enough margin on this paper where I'm probably not gonna be painting onto my desk, but it's nice to have something underneath. That's what I was using my seed catalog for actually, is the seed catalog is a good thing to put underneath so that if your um, Mod Podge or your paint or whatever you're doing is coming off of the edges, it'll just go onto the pages of that catalog and then once this, these pages are messed up, you can just turn turn the page so you can see some of these past pages are stuck together. And that way you still you, you keep having a new clean surface to work on. Because it's, it's a disaster if you start having glue everywhere and then you put something down onto the glue. There's a little bit of leftover glue from the last thing and then this gets stuck on there. It can end up being a problem. So these have already been glued down to the paper. I just need to start sealing them in. So this paper is not very heavy either. It's not like watercolor paper that I was using for, um, for this one right here. This is a much heavier paper. This is probably only like 75 GSM, almost like printer paper, cheap construction paper basically. So I'm not going to add very much water to the Mod Podge because the water is going is going to be the main thing that makes this paper um, get all wonky. So I'm going to try to do it with um, pretty much straight, straight Mod Podge. So my hair has been really weird ever since I put Mod Podge in it. Um, as a joke for that other sh episode and I don't know if it's the weather or if it's the Mod Podge or if my I just need a haircut but it's been uh, really messed up lately so I have a super cheap brush and the bristles are a little bit stiff so I think that's not gonna be the best for the delicate parts of the flowers but um, I'm gonna use these tweezers to help me hold the plant matter in place and I'm just gonna go slowly and carefully. Sometimes having a softer, more delicate brush can be good for some of these parts because sometimes you can end up, when you're putting the Mod Podge on, you can end up yanking the, the petals off or yanking individual flowers out, breaking leaves, things like that. So at first it looks terrible. Look, I didn't even pull the anthers off. That's good. But this will all clear, and once you get one down, it will be much easier to put another one later if you need to, because the plant matter will be more stuck in place and more secure. And always paint the painting in the right direction so you don't like fold the leaf up. So like with that leaf, it's pointing that way, I would want to paint that way as well. One trick um, that I learned from a figure drawing class, and this is not super important with the Mod Podge because it will dry transparent, but if you have a background around something, it's best to make that background, like if you're shading behind something, um, it's best to make that not just like a halo effect. Um, it looks better if it's like an abstract shape or a shape that sort of matches the layout of the book. So notice how I made this into a rectangle instead of just leaving that halo. It's not super important with this, but if you don't want to detract from the shape of the subject, which is this, this plant, then it actually um, works better to sort of frame it like that. Maybe you've seen um, John Muir Law, some of his bird drawing stuff. He will create this sort of dark, um, watercolor wash that comes out around it. It's a really good way to draw negative shapes, for example, and it's best, and he, he always does this to make it like a square or a rectangle instead of making it a halo effect around that bird or whatever you're drawing. Oh shoot, a little, um, a little hair bristle came off of my brush.
So this is a really cheap brush. You could definitely get better effects if you had a finer brush. Um, and if you watered this down a little bit, you'd get less of that texture. I'm not too worried about it because I've already tested this brush out for this and it's not that distracting once it's dry. Once I do this, I think I might use this as a cutout one, sort of like that other this example. I want to try a cutout on black paper. Post in the comments what kind of art projects you've been working on lately. And if you have any art stuff you've been doing this weekend, let me know in the comments what kind of art projects have you been planning lately or doing at home. Okay, so that was a brittle leaf and it broke into pieces. There's nothing you can do about that. That happens. One thing that will show up is these bubbles. If there's bubbles in the Mod Podge, those will show up when it dries and sometimes it can look cool. And if you're not expecting that or don't want that, it could be annoying. They mainly seem to show up when you go like up and down with the brush a lot. Let's see if I can do this without losing any flowers here. Yes, didn't lose any flowers there. I guess my speech about <laughs> painting the outline doesn't matter if you're going to actually cut the whole thing out, which I think is what I'm going to do with this one. Okay, last bit of this flower here. Wow, it looks like there's a lot of interesting information in the live chat right now that I haven't been able to completely st stay attentive to. Sounds like Christine has a cool thing to do. Um, and someone else on Facebook has a fun project they're working on. Oh, someone's working with a new flower press. Cool. Leslie has a good recommendation. All right, so now this is ready to just sit and dry. I'm gonna be really careful to clean my, um, I don't want the Mod Podge drying on my tweezers and messing them up. So I'm gonna clean that. Dang, lots of great, um, Great stuff people are doing. All right, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm going to turn the page in case there's any Mod Podge on here. I don't want my next project to get
stuck there. Oh, actually, I need to go the other way. Oops, those are already stuck together. Oh, 30, 30, here we go. Okay, so this is gonna go to the side. Looks like my spilled tea didn't dry yet, but I'm gonna roll with it. And get some more tea. Okay, so I'm gonna tape this eucalyptus leaf down. Probably shouldn't have chocolate next to my art supplies. Could get dangerous. All right. Looks like that'll almost cover it perfectly. See, I think you have to have those quick movements to get it without the little lines on it. Let's see what happens when I put it down on top of the tea splatters. Maybe that was a bad idea. Getting too artsy fartsy over here. What the heck? I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. There's still some friggin' tea on there though. Like wet tea. But it's an experiment. There's something kind of satisfying about doing this part where you're like pushing the tape down onto the leaves. All right, great. I think that looks fine. Now I'm just going to write um, something maybe because they're from, all from my road. I'll write eucalyptus um, up here. And then Gold Ridge Road down here. Oh, great question. Anyone here have an answer, potential answer to this question that might be more knowledgeable than me? I, I, the cicada wing might be a little bit delicate, but it's worth a try. Like, I think especially with, if you could fit it under this tape, like regular sort of scotch tape, I think is a little bit more delicate thickness wise. Uh, maybe that would work with the, the cicada wings. Some people have been using the masking tape for decades. I have just started using it. So like I have one plant in here that I taped down less than a, a week ago. Whoa. Uh, less than a week ago. So. I have no idea what it's going to be like over time, but I think some of these things preserve surprisingly well. I wouldn't put like a really fleshy, wet thing underneath the tape. Uh, the Mod Podge could potentially work for a bug wing also. I feel like there's an imbalance here. Like I need to have some text up here but the problem is is that there's tape there so i can't go directly with this ink onto tape so what i might do is but because of this really bold lettering down here it's sort of throwing off the balance of the the composition i think so i might actually try gluing something let me just see what it looks like i could glue a little piece of paper here and write on that what would that look like Probably glue um, white paper, but I have this black paper right here, so it would look kind of weird covering those leaves partially. Maybe I'll just leave it. That was a little bit 
imbalanced. And this has nothing to do with anything else at all on this page, but that's fine. Okay, so this is going to be dry pretty quickly. I could probably, that's the really great thing about the tape, is I can just turn the page so quickly um, and go on to the next thing. If this had been anything Mod Podge related, I would have to wait a long time. Like my, the thing I just painted with Mod Podge is totally not ready to go. So I'm going to save some of these to Mod Podge for sure. Maybe I'll Mod Podge them on separate paper so I can move it out of the way. I bought a bunch of this when it was on sale and um, I think at a, uh, what store was that? It was like a framing store that had really good discounts on stuff. And um, back when I was accumulating tons of art supplies, I bought a whole bunch of these because they were on sale. And you know, the thing is that even when something's on sale, if you don't need it, you still have to pay money to get it. So it's not like you're actually saving money, you're still spending money. But now I'm using this for um, for this these kind of techniques and for pressing because it works pretty good. It's it's pretty heavy. Um, oh, here we go. I was hoping Angie would answer this question. But I'll also try some heavy black paper. And I got this um, pastel paper for a workshop. It's really fun for pastel, but it's also what is it? It's 98 pounds, 160 GSM. That's not that heavy. It's definitely lighter than this oil paper, but it's still heavy for black and relatively heavy for black. And it can be a cool thing to experiment with, you know, like what will these look like? They look totally, things look totally different on black paper. So it's good to, to have some black paper on hand for this kind of projects. And then you can always cut this out and put it into your nature journal. And what you can end up doing is having a nature journal that has like toned paper in it. If you just glue in pieces of other types of paper and it gives you more options to draw on as well as to, to, to put pressed flowers and things like that on. So I'm going to try some on both of these with Mod Podge. So I will get my nature journal out of the way. I'll start with this one. There's gonna be a lot of space on it, and I'm planning on cutting these out, so I'm not that worried about it. Is this too much space? Maybe I should just do the black one. Yeah, just gonna do the black one. The calendar is telling me something. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is a little bit different. I'm going to use two different types of glue, or maybe I'll just use Mod Podge for both. But now I have to glue these onto the page and cover them up. So it could be best to do that in two separate steps. Um, I think I'm going to try to do it all at once. Um, oh, wow. Interesting info. Good info, Angie. Thanks for that. Just so folks know, if you're watching the live, you can also um, pause and you can go into the settings at the bottom. I think it's like over here on your screen. There should be like a little gear wheel thing. And if you click on it, it has settings. You can actually change the speed of this. So you could actually slow me down or speed me up. And that way you could go back and like check something from the chat and then speed me back up and I'll talk really fast and you know, catch up to where everyone else is. So it's a little pro tip for um, the live. I just learned that recently from um, one of my viewers when they get on the, the live and I've already been talking for a while to catch up with the chat, the live chat. She watches me in like, um, I don't know, maybe it's 50% um, sped up and then she can catch up to where everyone else is watching the show. So I thought that was really cool. Or if, if something is, if you need more time to do one of these um, techniques in your own journal, you can slow me down and then you'll have more time to do the, the art part. So one thing I've been getting better at is like flipping things over in my mind because sometimes you'll accidentally, inevitably you'll sometimes accidentally glue something the wrong way or put the glue on the wrong side or realize 
oh, it's not the mirror image that you wanted it to be. So that's probably a good thing for our brains to be practicing. Since these have not been pressed, um, they don't have like a flat, totally flat shape already. So it might just take several passes of this before the Mod Podge will eventually get it down. That was how this one was. And some of these leaves kept sticking up off the page. But after letting it dry and then Mod Podging it multiple times, it has finally like flattened out. Can't believe these leaves are just, I've been driving over these with my car like every day for the last like nine years that I've lived here and I've never done anything with them. And they're actually super cool looking. The colors are really nice. They're, you know, not super bright saturated colors, but they're really sophisticated, interesting colors. This is the one that's most likely to get messed up. Like these edges here. So this is something that I'm going to come back to and do a second round of Mod Podge for sure. Um, maybe even four rounds of it because you can see things are not stuck down completely yet. That's why it's good to have multiple projects in process. So I'll show you one that has had this very first pass and just barely gotten glued down. Um, and I'll do a second round on it. So here is one that I think it only got, where is it? This one only, oh, is this the one? Where did I do that one already? I'll do one more round on this, or maybe I'll cut this one out. Are these ready to get cut out? I could give an example of that. Actually, I don't think these ones are ready to cut out. I think these are ready to get another round so i'm going to turn my page i love this using this for my um, background and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use up the rest of my mod podge i don't want to leave any in here and i'm going to do a uh, i think this might be the second or third pass on this salvia here and this is on the isometric graph paper if you're into um junk journaling and stuff this could be a really fun addition to your paper collection and it has a really cool pattern and you can actually draw and doodle. It's really fun for doodling on and for lettering. You can do three dimensional lettering on this isometric graph paper really easily. Let me show you some of mine. Probably shouldn't stop in the middle of this to show you this, but where is it? Can't remember what page it's on. Oh, here we go. So right here you can see that this pattern down here was made on the isometric graph paper. It's really good for making these sort of three-dimensional doodles. Um, and you can even paint watercolor on it, even though it's, it's pretty lightweight. Um, I found it worked fine with wet media. I even painted like acrylic onto it. And you just follow where the lines are and you start making really cool geometric patterns and three-dimensional patterns on this isometric graph paper. I think I posted a link to it, but if you just go online and search for isometric, isometric graph paper or ask at your um, local art supply store, you can find it. Engineers use it a lot, I think. Uh oh, I'm running out here. So this will help protect these leaves. I know some people in my last video mentioned that uh, Mod Podge is not necessarily the best and that there's some. Uh, gel media that you can use or gel medium um, that you can use and it's something that's usually used as an additive to like acrylic paints I think and you can use that for painting over flowers and stuff like that so this looks opaque right now but it'll clear um, just like this one and look really good so now I'm gonna do move this out of the way so it dries and I'm gonna do one cutout And I'll wash this brush so I can get at least one more use out of it.
Oh, Ray Bonta's here. Oh, hey, Ray Bonta. Sorry, it's probably because of the time change. Not everybody um, has the same time change as we do in the U.S., so sorry about that. Um, I'm kind of have mixed feelings about whether or not I should do a cutout on this one. I think I'm actually going to leave this one the way it is, and for the, the last part of the show, I am going to um, take some stuff out of my flower press and see if there's anything cool in here to show you. But before I do that, let me mention, oh, I think I'm going to put this sticker on here, actually. Um, there are some cool stickers that are out there for people who are supporting the Nature Journal show on Patreon. I know a lot of you who are here um, joining in, in the live chat actually are patrons already. I just wanted to remind all of you that this show is for free and I make two episodes a week and it takes a lot of time and I'm trying to make this into my career, spreading nature journaling around the world and empowering people to do more nature journaling because I think it can actually make the world a better place. So if you want to find out more about how you can get access to stickers like this and other special content, um, just go to patreon.com slash Marley Pfeiffer and you can support the show. Um, and it really helps because that's one of the main ways that this show is made possible. So thanks to everyone who are already supporting. Um, now I'm going to open up my flower press. This was the, the sort of modified version that I, I've set up at home and it's been working really, really well. Um, and I, I'm just like addicted to this. I have this in my car all the time and I'm just always looking at things and trying to decide if I can press them or not and how I could put those into my nature journal once I do press them. Um, this setup has worked really well for me. So I think my newer stuff is going to be on this side. So I'm going to flip it over. Oh, it even smells good. It smells good in here. Oh, hi, Tamara. Oh, thank you so much. That would be awesome to have you as a patron. You've been a, you've been a dedicated follower of the show for a while. So um, that would be super cool to have you as a patron as well. And Tamara is actually going to be on an upcoming version of the show where we're going to talk about mobility and nature journaling and nature access, um, a super important topic. So I think these still need a little bit more time. This is a, we a really common weed, um, and I just want to show you how a really common weed, um, still feeling quite moist. I'm going to put this back in my car where it's nice and dry, but um, this is just showing you how a really common weed just tossed on here without any real consideration to, um, you know, especially laying it out. It still looks quite beautiful. This is one that a student of mine did. Um, it would be possible to come in at this stage and actually spread it apart a little bit more if I wanted to. It's still a little bit wet, but I'm, I'm going to just move it to the next page. And then I have a, here's another common weed um, that has some dirt on it, but just look how beautiful those leaves are actually. They were a little more green when I picked them. Um, and then I make sure to put these cardboard layers next to the wet layers of plant because it helps it dry out better. So I'm going to actually space that with more cardboard. I think this is another pretty wet one with that wild radish. This one was also green when I picked it. Um, and you can see the flowers are looking pretty amazing. There's plants in this family almost everywhere in the world. So even if you um, live in an urban area, you might be at a not too far away find some flowers that are in this brassica family and look at how cool the veination is on the individual flowers i don't know if the camera really does it justice but um, that will be a really fun one to work with it still has a lot of moisture in this thick stem so i'm going to be really careful that mold doesn't start to grow in here and these look like some really wet ones too i can see moisture coming through there this is a flower I didn't try doing um, at an earlier time because it seemed very three-dimensional to me. These are some calendula flowers. Um, they look like they definitely need more time. So I'll leave those alone. And, well, that needs a lot more time. <laughs> Let's see. Some of these are just from Thursday and haven't dried out that much yet. 
I think everything else in here needs more time to dry. Everything else in here just needs more time to dry. So those are some examples of the flowers I've been pressing lately and the other plants I've been pressing and that I will incorporate into my nature journal soon. And don't forget that this coming um, Wednesday, I'm going to be doing a live show, Nature Journaling Australia, talking to Kim LaPere. So don't miss that episode. It's going to be really fun to learn about nature journaling down under. Um, I did have some Australian species today. Those um, eucalyptus leaves, those are from a tree from Australia um, growing here in California. And I showed you a lot of different methods for using pressed plants in your nature journal, including how to get material if you live somewhere where it's still winter or you don't have access to pressed flowers or very many fresh plants. There are still options, even if that is getting gardening catalogs and cutting these, cutting out images from the gardening catalogs or magazine photos of flowers and putting those into your nature journal. Um, all of the same techniques with the glue will still apply. So thank you everybody for joining live. Thank you so much to all of my Patreon supporters. And for those of you that are watching this as a recorded version, you can always check out the description for more information about how you can support the show and also links to the materials used in this show. All right, I'll see you next Wednesday, uh, Nature Journaling Australia with Kim LaPere. Um, don't miss the lightning round. Bye. Bye, Cindy. Bye, Tamara. Bye, Angie. Bye, Charlotte. Bye, Ray Bonto. Bye, Christine, Sue, Leslie. Bye, everybody. Bye.